Howdy doody, my name is Susie, and today I thought I would share with you how I'm making some Easter lilies out of cone coffee filters. And this is in my, probably my top three favorite flowers to make thus far. And I really think that they turn out very, very realistic, in my opinion. And these take a little bit of time to put together, but really there's only six petals and I'm using a new painting technique, which is painting the flowers after I've made them. So I'm excited to show you how I made these. I think that you might enjoy this process. So for this project, we're going to need cone coffee filters and I'm only using the cone coffee filters because the basket coffee filters are much too thin and they didn't turn out quite as nice as the cone coffee filters. It's a little bit thicker paper. So we need the cone coffee filters. We're going to need some petal templates and there's only three templates. There's leaves, There's a template for the large lily, which is, yes. I think this is the large lily. So there's a template, which is two petals for the large lily. And then there's another template, which is two petals. And that would be for the small lily. So you can just see a little variation in size, slightly different, but this creates different sizes in your flowers. So if you're making a bouquet, it definitely looks more realistic when you have these variations. Coupled with the fact that each flower only takes six petals. Now we're also going to need, besides our templates, which I'll uh, link them to this video and our coffee filters, we're going to need some 18 gauge um, wire for the actual stems. And I just happen to buy this wire from the dollar store that already comes pre-wrapped. But if you don't get that, then just use the 18 gauge wire. And then of course you're going to need stretchy floral tape. We're also going to need a very fine wire. And again, um, I buy this at the dollar store and I don't know the gauge, but this wire is very, very fine. And what we're using the wire for is for each one of the petals, we're going to insert the wire right in the middle of each petal. So that's why you want a very, very fine wire. And we're going to need even a finer wire for the stamen. You see these guys? They look really cute, very realistic. So we're going to need something really fine for that. And what I did was I picked up this, um, oh, here we go. This is 26 gauge wire. And this is for, uh, it says it's for floral wire. So this is 26 gauge. This is fine enough for the stamen. This is a little bit too fine for our petals. So for our petals, we want something a little bit thicker than 26 gauge. Now we're also going to need some scissors. Um, we're going to need some needle nose pliers uh, and that's just to create some little circles. It's not 100% necessary. We're going to need our glue gun. For our leaves, which look like this, we're going to be using, we're going to paint these with acrylic paint. So you're going to need some leaf green acrylic paint or you create your own color. And I've just got some, I've got some olive green, I've got some brown, I've got some bright green, and then I've got this dark green. And I just usually mix those to create um, a leaf color that is looks most realistic to me. We're going to need a couple of little paint brushes and we're going to need pastels. 
as well as a little bit rubbing alcohol. And like I said, and like I said, the painting technique for these flowers is a little bit different. We're going to construct the flowers and then we're going to come in and paint each flower. So what I've done, and especially if you're making white lilies, um, you want to use some very soft muted colors in uh, like greens and yellows and very pale brown to replicate the center of a white lily so the most because you're painting the finished project and you can see the flower emerging as you're painting it. You have a lot more control over what the flower looks like in the end than if you were to pre-dye all the petals um, prior to making the flowers. Now we're also going to need some sticky glue. And again, I'm using this Aileen's Tacky Glue and it's like an Elmer's glue, but it dries faster than Elmer's glue, slower than a glue gun. The glue gun we're going to be using in order to create some of these buds and to secure a little bit of paper towel. We're also going to need some paper towel to just make those stems a little bit thick and more closely resemble a lily. All set up, I've got my Easter lilies for inspiration. And I don't know if you can notice, but we've got in my bouquet, I've got Easter lilies that are various sizes and they are at various stages of growth. And I made the template to only have two patterned petals. So there's only two patterns of two petals that you're gonna be using in order to create all of these flowers or any of these flowers or only one of these flowers. So for the large lily, we're gonna be using this template, which is a large petal and a small petal. And because we need three of each, we're going to need three cone coffee filters in order to create the large lily. Now, if you're making the small lily, the small lily is basically only using the small petals. So what I did is I just drew another coffee filter only using the small petals. So if you're making the small lily, then you're still gonna need three coffee filters because it's six petals per flower. And then besides that, we're going to have leaves. And the leaves I've just made in these three sizes because I just wanted to make use of the entire coffee filter. And from these, you can make as many leaves as you like. However, I used eight leaves for each flower. And you can see that it definitely adds interest. And of course you can use more leaves all the way down, especially if you wanted, instead of doing a bouquet, if you wanted to do um, an Easter lily plant, then you could certainly continue adding the leaves all the way down. So that's it. Three simple patterns, Two petals, one leaf, and you can make any of these flowers. So I took my pattern and out of some old file folders, I cut out my three patterns, which is a large petal, a small petal, and the leaves, they're just three patterns. And then by using this as my guide, I laid the pattern on. And if you want to cut a lot of flowers, I found that um, layering either three, but no more than four filters enabled me to uh, cut out the petals evenly. And I can stack my filters and I found that no more than four filters because I just found it gave me the most control. Little piece, just cut off the little piece at the bottom so that they are single. So now that I've got all my petals, then I just came back and this is really up to you, but it does add some interest. Interest if you just give the outside of the petal a little zigzag. You don't wanna make the petal any smaller than it is. So I just come in and just take little, just little bites out of the side, a little tiny bit of a, a ruffled look, if you can see. I just scalloped it a little bit. Like I said, you don't have to do it, 
it adds a little tiny bit of interest. And the reason that I'm scalloping it after I've cut the petals is because I don't want to make the petals any smaller. So I just want to take little bites out of the edge. Oops. And you might find some of the papers are attached. You just pull them apart. Because so for the large lily, you want three large petals, three small petals. Obviously, when you're using three of the coffee filters, you're going to get enough for two flowers. So I've got so I've got my stash of my large petals and I've got a stash of the small petals. And then I've got all these um, leaves that are ready to be painted. And I've got my leaves that are already painted. So it just helps to have everything organized. So once I show you how to make one flower, you'll be able to make all the flowers. The only thing that's going to be different are the buds. Now the next thing we're going to do is wire all of our petals. So all I do is fold them in half. Fold them in half. And just make a nice crease because we're going to be laying the wire in the center of the petal. Also take note of the top of the petal and the bottom of the petal. The top of the petal is always pointier, or it looks pointier. So I'm gonna take three of the fine wires and I'm just gonna cut them in half. So these are about nine inches long and it helps to keep your wires very straight. We're gonna run a bead of glue down the center like that. Not all the way up, we're going to leave that because it'll be cupped once we insert the wire and glue it in place. Then lay your wire in the glue. And I think you can see through where the wire is. You just wanna push it right into that glue and into the paper. You have to do that about, I find about two or three times. And before it dries, you want to open up and fold the paper over the wire to conceal it. And you can see at the top, it just leaves it a little bit cupped, which is nice to crease the wire as you go along with your nails or a tool is because it really enables you to get a really good fold. So you can see the top is cupped, that's the front, the wire is covered, and you can see it on the back how it's a little bit raised. The other thing I do is I keep the small petals separate from the large petals because it can get confusing and they begin to all look the same after a while. So that's the last of the small. And you actually end up using, well, I end up using a lot more of the small because I was using the small in the large, but I also use the small in order to make all the other flowers at different, um, different rates of growth. So, those are my small, those are my large. Then once I've got all my petals assembled and wired, the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to need our stem. What we're going to do in our flower is we're going to make our stamen and we're going to make this little center part. So I'll show you here. So there's two parts to it. So we want to make the center, and this is about two inches long, and it's got three separate little buds. So the way that I made that was I took one of my wires, and I want to create three loops. So I just started down here, and just created one loop, about that big. I want a loop about that big. And I twisted it. Then 
Then I took my needle nose. I've got one loop there. And then I just created another loop like this. So you can see there's another loop. And it's uh, close to the same size. And just gave it a twist. You can see I've got some little ears. And then I did that with the third stem. So I'm basically creating a little flower. Here's the third stem. And I just wrapped that wire around. And this wire is actually, it's uh, very, very fine. So you could essentially do this with your, by hand. Basically, you're looking for something like this with the three loops, like that. I didn't cut my wire because I don't know how long it's going to be. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to wrap this with paper towel to create this. So in order to do that, I just cut little strips. So I'm using paper towel because it can withstand um, painting. It's a lot stronger than the bathroom tissue. So with these little strips, what I want to do is just wrap around each one of these little um, petals. So I just added a little bit of glue. To the little strip. And then I just really just started winding it around. Just winding it around. You can pretty well manipulate the paper towel to stick and create this sort of um, little petal. And this is just a little detail, but these little details are really what um, are going to make the flower come to life. So again, just wrap it around. So I'm gonna add that, I'm gonna take an extra little piece of paper with glue, lengthen that stem. So this little stem is about three inches long and it's going to be this stem. So you can see, and now we're going to attach this to our flower stem. And I'm just going to come down about half an inch and I'm just going to wrap. So I've just wrapped it along my stem. And now I'm going to create these little guys, which are really adorable. So for the stamen, I'm going to create five. And I'm just going to use this 26 uh, gauge wire, this very fine, fine wire. And I'm going to just cut um, five pieces of wire at a length of, I'm going to make them about six inches long, six inch long piece of wire. I'm going to make five of them. And for this, we're going to be cutting We're going to be needing um, orange, yellow, just tiny pieces of, um, we're actually creating half moons. So we're going to need some orange paper. So either you have orange paper on hand or you do what I did and I took a coffee filter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to color my paper, this yellow orange using my pastels. And I'm going to color it and I'm also going to use um, the alcohol to smooth it out. So I just grabbed some of my pastels. And I used yellow and I used coral. I take my alcohol and just wet my paper. And what this actually does is um, it turns that powdery pastel into a really velvety watercolor. Yeah, so I'm just cutting a strip that's about half an inch and I'm gonna fold it over. So then I'm just gonna draw some little half moons like that and cut them out. I'm gonna cut them on the fold because actually what I'm creating is 
I'm creating a circle. And then I can just keep my paper, keep folding it, and cut these little pieces as I go along. So you've got five, five of these half moons, which if you were to open them up, they would look like an eye. But we're gonna keep them folded. So there's five. And now we're gonna take our teeny tiny stamen wire, little nose wires, you can just simply use a toothpick or a chopstick or um, the end of a paintbrush. It looks like a little tiny golf club. And you can do that with the end of a paintbrush. Open it up and I'm gonna pierce it right in the center with my toothpick. So I've just pierced it enough for the thin wire to go through and then when I raise it, what I want to do is I'm going to sandwich sandwich that little piece of wire in this little piece of paper. Then I can just take just a little bit of this tacky glue. You see? Now, don't worry if it looks too big or if it, uh, if it dries a bit wonky because you can always come back and trim it up afterwards, but this is perfect. So now we've got our five little stamen and we're going to wrap it with a little piece of, um, we're gonna wrap it with some of the floral tape. And this is a little bit challenging because these wires are so thin, but what I do is I wrap it up a bit like this until I've got about that much, so you can see. And then what I do is the what I can push it up into place because it's way too difficult to get it to stick all the way there. So at this point, I add a dot of glue and I push that right into place and I just let it secure that way. And then once I've got it secured up there, then I'm able to bring it down to the rest of the wire. Now, if you find that too tedious to make, there's lots of little baubles and flowers and florets that you can buy from the dollar store and or anywhere else craft store. And actually um, there are these little bouquets that I actually took apart. I just took my wire, wrapped it around these two. I took my piece of floral tape and I started above the wire. You can see how the wire is hang hanging there. So I started a little bit above the wire and just wrapped those two little beads together. And then I came down and finished off the wire. And you can see that that works too. And I use this as one of my stamens. So, so for the large Easter lilies, I did use these stamens with the uh, the yellow center. So the so small flowers, I just used these little stamen, which are these ones that I made. So you can do either or, and I didn't even use a center in these, I just used five of these. So now I've got my center piece, which you can paint now or you can paint afterwards. And these are basically all the colors that I used to create these. So I just use this as my palette alcohol. And then I just add it to my pastel. And while it's wet, I add a bit more. And then this creates um, a watercolor effect that you can see. And of course you can make it any color you want, yellow, green, white. And now I'm going to take my stamen and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, layer it and I want it to be, so about, I set my first one and it's about, a, uh, it's about half an inch, three quarters of an inch above the center part. And then I'm just going to wind that around my stem. So now I've just added a little bit of the floral tape to hold the stamen in place. 
and I'm just positioning them so that they are evenly positioned around there. You can see like that. And now I'm going to take my three large petals, add my petal, and I want it to start at the edge. I want the petal to be um, a good, a little bit more than halfway above the stamen. So I'm gonna grab it there and I'm gonna wrap the wire around. And I'm gonna do that with the three large petals. And don't worry about this wire. We're going to beef this up with a little bit of paper towel. So there, you can see how much taller the three center petals are. And now I'm gonna take the three smaller petals so I'm going to add them to the outside. You can see that they're shorter and I'm going to position them in between the two larger petals. So I want to line up the base and you can, because these are wired, you can definitely move them around. So you can see I'm placing them all at the base together. see it from the top and you can see it from the sides. You can see this is our short petal, our two longer petals. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold these. Well, I'm gonna fold them, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So now you can see the bottom. We're gonna hide all that wire by just taking um, a quarter, a quarter of a piece of paper towel and I just fold it in half and then I fold it on an angle so that I can wrap it around. And then we're gonna take a bit of glue and we're going to make a little collar, really snug around those petals. And now that I've got that collar secure, I fold this down. I'm gonna just add my glue to the paper towel. And now I'm going to start angling that paper towel down. Out. So you can see I've just thickened up that collar. I've still got wire going along here. And now I'm going to take my floral wire And I'm just going to wrap it around. And then I'm just gonna take my time and I'm just going to pull on that tape and stretch it a bit and twist to cover all of the paper towel. So it's nice and tight. So now we've got this. This is basically our flower. So that's it. So from this flower, you can create, like I said, the method is the same, whether you're using three of the large petals or three of the small petals, you're going to construct it exactly the same way. So now all I do is I want to shape the flower. So I start off with the outside smaller petals and I'm just bending the petals maybe halfway. So I start off with the small ones and just bend them halfway. And uh, really, I'm just positioning the lily at this point. And then I'm going to bend the large petals. So you can see just by doing that already, we've got something that looks like the lily. Now the lily is kind of a bit of a cone. When you look down, it's kind of cone shaped. So I want to create a bit of this cone shape. So I just create a little bit of a cup at the bottom of each petal. Think of look is I really want to make sure that the flower is cupped. And I can even do this and push on the inside to conform that wire 
to the sheaf of my hand. And then you just position it the way that you want. And there is your flower. See how far down it goes. And when you're, when I'm pushing back the petals of the lily, I really just bend them back enough to the point that it exposes the stamen, which now I think you can understand why we make them so long, because ideally it's kind of nice to see that peak outside of the flower. So that's the lily and now you're ready for painting. So in order, so this again was the large lily. If we're going to make the small lily, we're making it exactly the same, but we're just using six of the small petals. The large lily, I made a bud, which I attached it to the flower and added the leaves. So with the small Easter lily, which is the small petals, six small petals, and you're not using the large petals, you can also create this effect. And this is exactly the same flower, except for this. I just added some paper towel to the center. I created my flower and I left it closed. So you can manipulate the petals in order to create a flower that's partially opened. So you essentially can create flowers that are growing at all different rates. And here's one that I created, which is closed, partially closed. And I've colored it and added a bud. So you can see, you can create a totally different looking lily. It can be like this. In here, I put two flowers together and one bud. And you can see you totally create um, a different shape and a new flower, which creates more interest for your bouquet. Now, in order to create something like this, where there's three lilies, you're just going to attach the flowers at different stages on the stem. So it just depends on how you like it. I add and of course, I've added the leaves, which also create a little bit more interest, especially when you put it into a vase, you get that beautiful green background. Now, before I go on, I'll show you how to create the bud. And for the buds um, and wrapping the paper towel, you might wanna use the glue gun because it's a little faster and stronger. So basically you just take your paper towel. I'm just gonna use some of this glue for now and I just start rolling it. I can fold over the tip and then continue. You're gonna need about a paper, like one full paper towel. So you just take your paper towel and wrap it around. You can use your, um, you can use your glue gun, which I did with some of these flowers, or you can just use your tape, your um, Aileen's glue. So I've just taken three of the small petals and I'm just going to glue this in place. And I'm going to be using the, um, I'm gonna use the Aileen's glue. So I've just covered it like that. One petal. You could almost just use two petals, but I'm gonna use three to get that extra fullness. And then I'm just adding my three petals together around and basically one petal should cover the next petal and uh, really the buds should be as smooth as they can be and then once this part is done then all I do is I come back and I just cut it round so now that I've got my basic shape for my bud I'm going to take another paper towel and I'm just gonna add a collar to the bud like this. And I just want to be able to wrap it. So there's my paper towel. And then I just, you just wanna wrap it around and taper it. I need a little bit more glue. If it's nicely glued and secure, uh, it makes it a lot easier to wrap. 
So now I've got my bud and I can take my floral tape, wrap it around the collar. and then stretch and turn and then just taper it down. So now I've got my bud. You shape it to look like a bud and with the Aileen's glue, uh, because it takes a bit of time to tack up and it, it makes the paper a bit wet, it's much easier to conform and get something smooth. So, so now that's our bud and we can take any flower this was my sample flower. <laughs> okay, so that's got a bud. This is a large one. So now I've got my flower and I'm just gonna position my bud wherever I think it looks good. Um, check it out in your boss. Yeah, you, know, you can always bend it. So I think that that's just, that's just sticking up a little bit past the flower. So I like that. So I'm going to secure it leaving about five to six inches from the top. And remember, um, you've got the flex, this is on wire, so you can move it afterwards. But you wanna make that strong connection. So I just put my two flowers together and I just really wanna make sure that that floral tape is really coming in contact. It's nice and snug and it's keeping the two wires together. And sometimes when, if there is a, if one wire is shorter than the other, I go past it and then I just go back up so that it's a nice smooth transition. And there is my flower. And of course you can move the bud any way you want because it's on a wire. So now we're going to paint our flowers and this is really the fun part and the part that obviously you can do whatever it is that you like. But if you like this design, I've used a very pale green and yellow on the outside and on the inside. I've also used a little bit of brown at the very um, center of the flower to create depth. And I've added these dots on the outside of the petals just to make them look interesting. So this is really the fun part of the project. And I'm just going to get my things together. So like I said, I've got my little palette. These are the colors that I've used in this design for the flowers. I've got my pastels. And I've got a very fine tipped brush. And I've got a wider brush. And then I've got a very long brush. These are very soft bristle brushes. And then I get a little dish. And you only need a tiny bit of alcohol. And... I want to create a little bit of a yellowish green. And this of course is up to you, but I'm just showing you how I made the white lilies. So I added my pastel yellow and I took my light green and just added my green and you can see how the pastel, how it leaves the powder. And then with my brush, I just added a little bit of alcohol and you can see that when you add the alcohol, it turns that pastel powder and pastel paste into what looks like a watercolor. So I just add more and then I go inside my flower, and I just start painting upwards. Now, the other great thing about using the alcohol as your paint is that while it uh, wets the paper, it dries very quickly, unlike if you're using uh, watercolors, but you could try using watercolors. I just really love this method, and the paint ends up being so velvety, uh, soft looking. So now I've got something like that. 
And when I get to this point, so I'm gonna add some more pastel to my little paint palette here. I'm gonna add a little bit more alcohol. And this time I'm going to run my paintbrush along the seam of the petal like this. And that's a little dark, but I can water it down. And you can see that you can just create a very faint stripe, like so. I'm just adding a bit of alcohol, just plain alcohol to those stripes, and I can uh, mute them and fade them out even more. But some of the colors already come through the back, but I just took a little bit more of the green and just added a faint wash to the outside of the petal. And I'm doing this fairly quickly, but this is the part that's fine and you can take your time. So now I've just done a light wash on the outside and it just helps and create that depth. In some cases, I've just run my paintbrush just over the green and the yellow and I'm just running it along the edge of some of the petals for a little bit more definition, like so. The edge of those petals and just kind of highlighting some of those uh, ridges that we cut out and shaped. Uh, and now for the inside of the flower, I'm gonna add a little bit, I took some of my this reddish brown and again I'm just adding it to my palette I'm using the same paintbrush and I'm watering it down and I just dab a little bit of brown at the very base on the inside I got to do it this way so now I've got a little bit of brown on the inside of the flower you can see the browns kind of bled through a little bit on the outside now this is going to lighten when it dries. It's still a little bit wet. And I'll be able to maneuver the petals and make them look a little bit better. Before I do the dots, I'm gonna just position the petals in a way that looks nice. And if your flower, sometimes if it's, uh, if the flower is too open, you can just pinch it from the bottom like this bring those petals in together and you can see that you get this effect. So now you can see how the flower is shaping up. And now I wanna be able to add the dots just here on the, uh, the crease of the flowers, just where I bent it. So for this, I'm going to use my fine um, paintbrush, piece of paper. And I actually want my paintbrush to be a little bit wetter. Whoops. You can just test on your paper until you get the size that you like. And we're just creating little dots to um, just make it look a little bit more realistic. I just dab it off and then I'm just going to add a couple of little dots. Scattered. So you can see, just adding a few little dots and it doesn't take a lot or you don't even have to add these, but so there you go. I've added the dots and you can see how it really does make it look realistic. And depending on the stage of growth of the flower, you can open it up, you can close it up more so that it looks smaller. So that's basically how I painted the lilies. And then for the bud, I did the same thing. On the base, added a little bit of brown and green where the bud is emerging. So I'm just adding a little bit of green, a little bit of brown at the base. So I'm just adding a bit of paint to where the petals overlap just to create some shade. And 
and that's it for my bud. So that's basically how I painted my flowers. Now for the leaves, the leaves are very easy. So for the leaves, I added them directly to the stem and I glued them going around in a circular pattern and I layered them one below the other going all the way down to create my eight petals. And because, or eight leaves, so and different sized leaves, I basically created them in order to make sure that we used up the uh, coffee filters as much as possible. Two, four, six, seven, eight. So you can use smaller leaves and then eventually get larger, etc. So basically we've got our eight leaves and to make the leaves, you wanna paint them with acrylic paint. You're gonna paint both sides. You're gonna flip them over a couple of times until they dry. It, it makes the paper a little bit thicker, stiffer, and it gives the leaves structure. And then all I did was I came in and just folded all the leaves in half. And I also did try and make the leaves um, darker on one side than the other. So I painted, I don't know if you can see, but I painted one dark and one light just to give the uh, the leaves a little bit more dimension. This little tip, about half an inch is what we're going to glue to the stem. So I'm gonna look at my flower and decide where I want my first leaf to go. And that's also going to um, depend, I would recommend you put it in a vase and see where your flower lands and see where you want to add your leaves. So I think the first leaf, I'm going to start it right at the base where the bud meets the flower. And we're just adding glue to the end of the leaf. And then we're just going to add it to the stem. And you can see when you cup it, uh, by default, you bend the leaf. And we're gonna be able to curl these leaves and, and move them around. Now the next leaf that we want to add is we want the leaves to go around in a circle. So the next leaf that I've got is here. So I'm just gonna bend the tip because this is the part that I'm going to glue. And this is where my leaf is ending. So I want to start the next leaf below below the last, but overlapping. And I'm gonna do that as it goes all the way around. So I just overlap the last leaf and I add it lower. Now you can bend, fold back the leaves and you can see that the leaves pretty well stand up on their own. You can manipulate them a bit. Uh, they don't have wire. So of course um, they're going to be bouncy, but that's exactly what I was going for. So that's the flower with the bud and the leaves. So there you go. That's what like they look like in a vase. You can see that I've made the leaves to just show outside of the vase and it does give a nice backdrop to the flowers. And like I said, you can create these flowers and you can open and close them to look like they're at different various stages of growth. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you give me a like. If you make these and you like them, I hope you share them. And if you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe. Until next time, happy flower making.